Hey, Magnus here, and today what I want to do is test out a theory. Can we get the same shots in a crop sensor that could actually look like they're full frame by using a similar type of lens? The point of this comparison is basically to see, do you really need a full frame camera to get the full frame look, or can you accomplish that by using a crop sensor? And do you need to get extra f-stops on your crop sensor just to get that similar full frame look? Or can you use an f2.0 lens on a crop sensor and a full frame and get the same type of shot? Here we go. Behind you with like the clouds, the sky and everything and still be able and to we've got the Rode video mic. Here we go. M50. What do you guys think? Okay, so what I wanted to accomplish is basically take the similar type of photos with my Samsung NX1, which is a 1.5 times crop APS-C sensor, and a full frame. I use the Canon 6D for this comparison. They were both released a few years ago, so they're not current cameras, but they're they're good enough for this comparison, so that's what I wanted to do. Part of the inspiration of this video comes from Tony Northrup's video, Crop Factor with ISO Exposure, how all these different camera companies cheat you. I'll leave the link in the description down below so you could check out that video. He does a great job in telling you what the math is in comparison of different uh, sensor sizes. So he does an incredible job of doing that and you should check out that video before coming back here if you haven't already. But you can watch my stuff and actually see real world tests of what I did to see if I can actually get the full frame look on a crop sensor. So my first shots of each of these pictures is basically I took just the same setting. I literally use this f2.0 Canon lens and I use it both on the NX1 and on the 6D. With the NX1, I had an EF to Samsung adapter, so that worked out pretty well because I wanted to make sure that I had the exact same lens to, to basically get the same similar type of shots. Now, no speed boosters or anything else attached. And for the Samsung, so that you know, I had to manually focus because the electronics don't pass through. But technically... That's what I was working with. So let's look at the first shot. So now, first shot, what you'll notice is the Samsung's on the left and the Canon 60's on the right. Now, if you look at both of these shots, I tried to take a similar composure on both the shots. Okay, this is completely zoomed out. So now the sensor layout is a bit different. So you'll have more of a squared off shot here while the Canon it's a, has a little bit more room on the wide angle lens. So you can see more here and more on the right. But basically I stood this the different distances because I was compensating for the the fact that the crop factor at one adds 1 1.5 times magnification to 35 millimeters. Looking for the same shot and let's look at the details and if I get the same bokeh effect on each. And you can tell that now, don't be confused. This is the Canon. This is the Samsung. The Samsung's actually depth of field is not as shallow as the Canon because of the fact that you don't have that crop factor and it's able to gather more light in the slightly larger sensor, which causes the bokeh to be different. Now, in both cases, the aperture was wide open, the f2.0 on each of them because you can adjust the aperture using that adapter as well on the Samsung. And what you see is more is in focus in the NX1 and not as much as the 6D. Now you know that you knew that that would happen. Basically, you take the same lens, you're not gathering as much light because of the crop sensor. You need to recompose yourself and by recomposing yourself, you're not going to get the same look. So, if you want to know the settings on each of these cameras, I had for this shot, I had the NX1 1 160th exposure time and the ISO at 640. You do not see the f-stop because, again, none of the electronics pass through. But on the Canon, you can tell f2, 160th, and 
ISO 400. Now the larger sensor gathers more light, so I just visually tried to compensate for light, and they actually come pretty close. I did not do any math on this one. Actually, it looks like the NX1 probably had a bit more light because the ISO was able to compensate for that, but uh, ever so slightly. But we're going to move on to the next shots. So on this next shot, I had ISO 400 on each of them. Actually, let me pull up these descriptions. So for these next shots that I want to show you, I had basically similar settings. ISO 1250 on each. The shutter speed at 1 400th so basically this so that you could see the difference the aperture was wide open on both of these shots now you'll be able to notice that both of them are actually lit very similarly maybe the uh, Canon looks just a tad darker what you should see is because of the Samsung being a crop sensor similar ISO levels are probably going to show more noise on the crop sensor than the full frame so let's zoom in and see what we can pick up when it comes to noise I've got the nx1 on the left and the 6d on the right now the 6d just by looking at this angle the colors are slightly different but just looking at this angle i can tell you that it's a lot noisier on the nx1 a little blurry but that's because i might have missed my focus point and it doesn't match the focus point on each of these but it looks a lot cleaner on the 6d than the nx1 at similar ISO levels. Now in Tony's video he mentioned that you can't use the same ISO levels. There's a whole chart that he put up and I'll, I'll put it up here actually. I have his video up so you should definitely check it out. So in Tony Northrup's video crop factor with ISO and aperture on a full frame a higher ISO would be equivalent to an APS-C of a much lower ISO because of the amount of light gathering that the sensor does in its smaller size. So you'd have to adjust ISO levels, particularly for the shots. And that's why you this see it a bit noisier. He displays an ISO crop factor chart. So I decided to apply that on my next shots to see if I can get a similar look. Now let's check it out. Now these shots I'm gonna compare, I had the ISO at 800 on the 6D and on the NX1, I had it at 320, which should be about equivalent to what you need. But to make up for that light, because ISO's trying to compensate for a certain type of exposure, I had to reduce the shutter speed by the same amount of stops that I reduced the ISO so I can get a similar type of exposure on both shots. Now let's look at both angles with this setting and a similar type of field of view for the pictures. All right, so here we go on, on both shots, and let's compare noise from this perspective. All right, so from this trial, comparing those two different ISOs, you got the Samsung on the left and the 6D on the right. I, I don't know what the YouTube compression will do to this video, but I can honestly tell you that the noise performance at this point is pretty close, almost exactly the same, pretty similar. Um, if I zoom in a lot more, yeah, it's it's hard to tell. Colors are different, but at the same time, you get similar noise performance as a full frame sensor. However, you will never get the absolute maximum performance that a full frame sensor can do because of the fact that you've got a larger sensor, more room for light to be gathered. But if you want to come close, you could basically, it is possible. Now, looking at the shots and the, the depth of field, Again, I framed it exactly right, had the aperture right open on both cameras, and you have more in focus on the NX1 because of the smaller sensor than you have on the Canon 6D, which is a full frame sensor. So that's not being disputed. If you're getting the same frame on, on the prime lens that you're not moving, you can't do that. You'd have to adjust the shot based off of your focal length as well. So let's move on. Now this last test I wanted to run was basically, can I get the same depth of field on both cameras? And what does it actually do? What does the depth of field do with using the same lens? And I didn't, at this particular test, I didn't adjust for light. So it's the same shutter speed on both. But you'll notice that the 60 is actually a bit darker because I didn't 
because I didn't compensate for the light using, for example, shutter speed by closing down the f-stop. Now in Tony's video, you also have to adjust f-stop by the crop factor. So to get an equivalent f-stop, I put f at 3.5 on the 6D that basically has the same effect on the aperture as the cropped sensor would have with the APS-C camera. And here's what we got. So on the APS-C NX1, I've got pretty much similar settings, ISO 320, but I also kept the NX1's aperture wide open because you can adjust that. So it's the f2.0 basically, if you actually did have an f2.0 lens. And on the 6D, because of that crop factor, I multiplied f2.0 times 1.5. So if you take 2 and times the crop factor, which is 1.5 on this camera, you get around 3. So I did a 3.5 because you couldn't set it to 3.0 on the camera. So 3.5 to come as close as possible. And let's look at the shots. Now you've got the Canon on the right and the NX1's picture on the left. Now looking at this, it seems that I was a bit blurry. I missed focus on the box for the most part. Again, I was manually focused. It seems that I was sharper here. So the depth of field starts from here, but the Canon logo is a bit blurred out. And the focus, I didn't get perfect focus on this box. So it's harder to tell, but this is, at least from a distant perspective, though a bit darker, it looks pretty similar from a depth of field view that both are, are pretty similar. Although I'd say that the Canon 60 is still a bit shallower. It could be where my focus point was, where this I was a little bit closer to the 60. So I don't know, it's debatable, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I guess the focal field was a bit closer to me in this shot and a bit farther on this shot. That's why you'd see the Canon a little bit more in focus, but they were still pretty blurry. So you can accomplish a similar type of shot. You just have to make the adjustments on your camera. All in all, it looks like Tony Northrup's calculations are pretty much on point. Can you get a similar shot? Yes, but a full frame camera will still give you a lot more flexibility when it comes to how you compose and set up your shot based on your situation, but you can still get great photos with a crop sensor. What do you guys think? Do you prefer crop sensors thanks to their portability? Or would you rather go full frame, not care about portability as much because you want your shots to have a great light gathering ability? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, like, share, and you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. See you guys later.